AMD just sunsetted support for the 200, 300, and Fury series. This has left me completely stranded on my R9 380, and having had massive drive issues in the past has left me very disillusioned with AMD Radeon in general. Do you think this drop of support has been made too early and should be reversed, or is it time for the GCN architecture to die? So, yeah, this is something that sort of news came out a bit of a surprise. They're sort of just the latest driver update. Apparently, it, you can't install it on these GPUs. It's just they've just ended support for those products. And we're talking here about the R9 200 series or the, the 200 series was launched in sort of the end of 2013. Mm -hmm. And then the 300 and Fury series came in 2015. So 200 series is about eight years old now. Uh, and the 300 and Fury being six years old. So do you think that's long enough to support those products? I, uh, I'm trying to think about this from all different angles. Like, Obviously, we would like support to continue for as long as possible. The three, the R9 390 is still pretty usable. That's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's similar to like RX 570, 580 type performance, which is still pretty usable today. You'd be the expert on that, yeah. I think I'm recalling correctly. It's been a while since I've uh, benchmarked those those GPUs, but, you know, they have, that's, I'm pretty sure the R9 390, 8 gig of, bytes of VRAM. That was the idea of the refresh over the 290, which had four. So it's still a pretty good product. Drop support does sting a bit because it's still quite a usable product. It's only six years old as well. Yeah, I feel like eight years for the 200 series because it's a refresh though. It does make it difficult, doesn't it? Because because then if you support the 300, you got to support... It's, it's one and the same anyway. If you're supporting one, you're supporting the yeah, other. Yeah, so it's like the 200 series being eight years old, I think that's valid. Mm. I think that it's fine to sunset support for that. And um, NVIDIA is doing similar with their Kepler-based GPUs, which were released around the same time in 2013. So I think support is being I think sunset it's, for those. I think it's fair to say that AMD has done a better job of support. I know this person said they've had some driver issues, but I think it's fair to say that AMD has done a better job of supporting those older GPUs till the point where they cut them off. Whereas general, yeah. Kepler's just been... I can't use the word on the main channel, but <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a fun show. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, some games have just been atrocious with Kepler. Like, it's been an absolute mess. Some just haven't worked. Like, like the performance we were getting on some of those cards was just ridiculous. Whereas, at least in my experience, the the, the R9 390, for example, has performed quite respectably in, um, yeah. in a lot of games. But yeah, I'm torn on that one. I think six years probably isn't quite enough. Eight it's definitely years. not enough for the Fury series. You know, that's not a refreshed car. And the Fury was an expensive product. The yeah, thing with the Fury, end. the problem with the Fury was the Fury sucked. We probably shouldn't <laughs> have bought it. I mean, we said don't buy it. Yeah, it's a crap it, product. It had four yeah. gigabytes of VRAM on a high end card. And... Yeah, wasn't that the situation where they refreshed the, the 200 series to the 300 series and gave it 8 gig of VRAM and then launched the Fury that had four gigabytes, but it was HBM? That's right. And then it's kind of like you could buy the mid range product with more VRAM. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, four gigabytes is, yeah, it's like it, it was on the, stuff. It, it was on the cusp at the time. Uh, but obviously, you know, my advice there or my, my my opinion doesn't help Fury owners, all six of them. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, look, I think I think they could have um, extended support for a, a, another year or two at least, probably two years ideally. Um, yeah, I guess the byproduct of having to support the 300 series for up until eight years means that because it's a refresh of the 200 series, you have to drag along the 200 series with it. I know, but it's kind of like boo-hoo, you refresh yeah, it to that's cash right. in. So it's that's, like you, you refresh the cards. I expect you the same thing with the 580 and 480. It's like you can't drop support for yeah. the 480, which is what happened with FSR. People said, oh, I, I know you've listed support for like the 580. Is my 480 supported? Because it's the same. It's the same GPU, and then they confirmed that it did. So, I'm trying to work out how upset I should get about this. Like, what promises did they make? So, like for example, the AM4 situation with the B or the, the 300 and 400 series chipsets. Yeah, I had no trouble getting upset with AMD, calling them out, making a video, basically bashing them over their head for that because. They very much led everyone to believe that Zen 3 or up to Zen 3 would be supported on 400 and potentially yeah. 300 series boards. So we made a video and we helped walk that back. In this instance, I don't know. What what are you sort of promised? What 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 is the expectation when you buy an RDNA 2 GPU? How long are you expecting that to be supported for? And also, how many, how many 
not this matters too much, but how many of these 200 and 300 series owners, or even Fury owners, bought the card new and have been using it through all that time? Or how many people just bought one second hand and have now realized that they're not getting support? So, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, there's not an easy answer because, again, I would say that, for example, a high end card, you would expect to have a longer lifespan than sure. a lower end card. Sure. Because a lower end card is going to become obsolete more quickly. Yeah, but as I said, they're, so, might, they're one in the same, really. So they, they are supporting one in the same. An architecture. But, but that changes the. That, that does impact the discussion because something like eight years might be reasonable for a high-end card, but then you know four or five years might be okay for a low-end. So where, where's AMD go? Do they have to support all the products for eight years or can they go like a middle ground and say, well, you know, most customers are on the lower products or, you know, it just becomes difficult. But I think, I think anything that is lasted for eight years, I think we can call that acceptable. And I don't think anyone is complaining about Kepler being depreciated. But then if, Nvidia started depreciating Maxwell, which is was released around similar time mm-hmm. to this. Mm-hmm. I think there's still a lot of you know 900 series owners, mm-hmm. and I think that would disappoint them. So I think, yeah, the answer is probably somewhere in between those two as to how long it should be supported. But yeah, I have to have a bit more of a think about it because obviously we want them to support it as, as long, long as, as possible yeah. indefinitely. But that's not practical or reasonable. So what is reasonable? Yeah, and you run into issues these days with things like, you know, how well do those cards support DirectX 12 features? Um, you know, obviously DirectX 12 has gotten more significant updates. You know, how long can you support cards that literally won't work in new games that require more advanced DirectX features? Um, you know, how long do you support a card with 4 gig of VRAM that isn't going to be running new mm. games very well because of VRAM reasons? So... Yeah, it's a, it's a complicated topic, but I think AMD's yeah, it's probably a little bit early. It, it just feels a bit early. I think for some so. Of these products. I think so. Yeah. 